There's an old saying that two heads are better than one. That saying seems to hold true for the next artist you'll meet. We're on location at the Milwaukee Repertory Theater to bring you stories of pairs of artists who are collaborating with their creativity. We'll start by going behind the scenes of Murder for Two here at the Rep, where two actors are playing 13 characters in a madcap musical mystery. Meet these Wisconsin husband and wife artists who combined their individual styles to create a beautiful painting as a special gift. And get to know this glass blower and this metal sculptor, local artists who call themselves partners in art. That's all coming up now on The Arts Page. The Arts Page is made possible by the Helen Daniels Bader Fund, a Bader philanthropy. Honoring Helen Daniels Bader's passion for the arts and creativity, the fund brings community arts to underserved audiences and is a proud supporter of local arts programming on Milwaukee PBS. Welcome to the Arts Page, I'm Sandy Max. Our look at artistic duos begins here, on stage at the Stackner Cabaret at the Milwaukee Repertory Theater's Patty and Jay Baker Theater Complex. Milwaukee native Joe Kanosian is a Milwaukee High School of the Arts graduate. He's been living and working in theater in New York City and has returned to his hometown with an award-winning musical he co-created. Two men play 13 characters and the piano in the mystery of Murder for Two. We're waiting in the dark for Arthur Quitney, everybody's favorite local patriarch. Expecting his appearance, we're all here inside a spooky mansion where we're waiting in the dark. Surprise! Um, what was that? <gasps> There's been a murder! Murder for Two is a two-actor murder mystery musical comedy. My name is Joe Kenosian and I co-wrote the book to Murder for Two. I also wrote the music. But of course, who could have foreseen the murder of Arthur Whitney, great American novelist? The plot of Murder for Two is that uh, a well-known New England novelist has been shot arriving home to his surprise birthday party and a number of the, the usual type of disparate characters have shown up uh, to, to welcome him. Raise the lights off. The elevator pitch for Murder for Two, tone-wise, sort of boiled down to, what if the Marx Brothers put on an Agatha Christie story? What would that look like? Who was hiding in the dark when the song started? Was it just me? Well, that's stupid. One actor plays the detective, and the other plays uh, all of the suspects, that's me, and we both play the piano. The show opened in Chicago in 2011, transferred uh, to, um, to Off-Broadway in New York and ran for a year, 2013 to 2014. And I toured with it off and on for two years. Now it's played so internationally. It. My sentences end in... Six. I don't know. Suspense. Oh. That has just been incredible but you know it's this is the theater i grew up attending as a as a kid you know i was brought here through middle school and high school to see any number of shows i went to milwaukee high school of the arts um, and had incredible teachers i really got an amazing education i in many ways see it as as valuable as what i learned in college a lot of what I do now professionally, I can kind of track back to those first experiences there and um, just learning how to be a person who works in the arts. Joe actually reached out and said, Milwaukee is my hometown. I would love to do this play at Milwaukee Rep. I knew the Rep was interested in, in doing the show, but not only to have had the time and work out that I could just have the show here, period, which is great, but to be in it too is really, really terrific. It's perfect for, for Milwaukee Rep to do it, and having Joe come home, I think makes it even more special. Oftentimes as a director, my job is to try to figure out what the playwright was thinking when they wrote the text. Um, in this case, having Joe in the room as the actor, the answer was always there. He's done almost 600 performances of Murder for Two, but this is a brand new production 
created here at Milwaukee Rep. And so it's Joe is really great in that process. He brought a lot of the best of previous productions, things that he knew through writing the play and workshopping it work really well, but also uh, a allowing us to try new things and play with them. Detective, I think it's really helpful to have a second point of view when you're conducting this Step, I'm not going to listen to another word out of you. Murder for Two, what we wanted to do and what hopefully, you know, in its way sets it apart is um, we wanted to convey that there was a room full of people there all there at the same time. So that's fun, certainly, but also the challenge is like you don't have time to change costumes and um, do a lot with, you know, makeup or anything like that. Keeping it in a gestural language and not, not literalizing what you're seeing. Because you're already not seeing a literal environment. You're not seeing nine people in a room. You're seeing one person, one very sweaty person in the room. No could have been able to handle the fact that I got class. I wouldn't call Weight Watchers a class, more of a program. At least I don't have a small You might. We won't know till you reach your goal weight. We are both on stage the entire show for all intents and purposes, keeping the energy high, so it's, it's a delightful challenge. Keep an eye on them. Come on, everybody. Let's take off our shoes and go slide around in the kitchen. That's the spirit. It's beautifully written and perfectly timed uh, in terms of comedy. It's not crime, your prime concern. Never look back, never think twice, never let a suspect give advice. Matt just plays the one character, and Matt is just fantastic. Marcus is a very, very ambitious uh, young officer. Oh, it's just a little badge I had made to remind me of my lifelong dream. Detective Marcus. And I show up at the crime scene first just in order to keep an eye on the suspects, but eventually I'm given the opportunity to solve the murder myself. I almost feel bad for him sometimes because my, my characters, uh, all they're ever trying to do is stop him from doing what he came there to do, which was to solve the mystery. If anyone else dies, you're going straight outside. Yes, it certainly would be tragical if someone else was to get whacked. And also be very, very wacky and farcical and kind of play with the fact that, you know, no one really cares that this guy died and, you know, they're just trying to go on with, with their own wackiness. Joe and Matt didn't meet until four weeks ago when we started rehearsals. There was just a really great chemistry between the two of them and I knew that we had a hit on our hands. I've always tried to be a fun wife, so come into the number one life. Poor choice of words, I know. What elevates it more than just a funny show is that the music and the lyrics are so smart. The piano is central to Murder for Two, and um, as the composer, I really wanted to find a language that, that sort of fit in with the show's neo-vaudeville sensibility. Um, so my reference points, again, in comedy and in, in composing, were the Marx Brothers. All this complex staging and choreography revolving it and around playing together and playing apart and switching off, and so it's really a center uniting force of the piece. Murder for Two is escapism, uh, plain and simple. We want people to leave their troubles aside, put the phone in the pocket, <laughs> and just disappear into a really, really madcap, silly world. And I hope they laugh a lot. If you want to have fun finding out who done it, you can see Murder for Two through January 14th. You'll find show information plus more behind the scenes videos and photos at the Milwaukee Repertory Theater's website at milwaukeerep.com. The set design for Murder for Two includes paintings. And even as props, a painting can grab our attention for its details, its design, and its reflection of the artist. Next, we meet two talented painters, Andy Fletcher and Katie Musoff. Milwaukee PBS's Dan Jones shows us how this husband and wife merged their individual styles of painting to create a meaningful artwork together. Andy Fletcher paints pastoral scenes. 
oil on canvas, beautiful landscapes, Americana, Wisconsin, a simpler time. I think I paint things that represent good things about our country in my mind, craft, beauty. I think I try to paint things that represent an older, more sustainable way of farming. I try to paint things that aren't so obvious. I don't try to paint things that are just completely just done just because it's pretty trees or just because it's pretty. I want there to be an edge to it or a sense of realism. I think that's when I did a good job was when people emotionally respond to what I do. When I'm at a show or something and somebody walks by and they're not really even paying attention and I see that it just hits them, that they just walked by, that they saw this thing, they stopped what they were doing and just had to look at it. It was powerful or good enough or different enough or whatever that they just stopped and had to look at it. And sometimes they buy it even. But I don't think that matters. It's just that the, it was an emotional, pure emotional reaction to what, what I was looking at. Just a few blocks away from home, in a small studio space, you'll find Katie Musa, watercolors, plants, animals, flora, and fauna. I found this one stuck in the door here at the studio. Bugs and birds, things she finds on walks through the neighborhood and along the highway. I do the kind of art that I do right now is in a, it's a direct response to the place that I live. Living in a place like like Stoddard, where you're right on the river, you know, right in the midst of um, lots of migration and, and, and lots of wildlife and um, just responding to it, you know, that's, that's the most, most abundant around here. And um, it's kind of like the low-hanging fruit. <laughs> I find I have uh, a real direct relationship to it. Um, there's, there's this real, real, real basic curiosity um, to these kind of things because when I first moved here, I wasn't really regularly knowledgeable about about these things I was finding, um, the plants, the mushrooms, the, the random feathers, and, um, and I really, really wanted to be closer to it and know more about it. And um, there was just kind of this uh, mystery of, of coming from the city and moving here and um, finding these beautiful things that uh, that I didn't know, you know, I didn't know the stories behind them. Katie used to paint portraits of people, only people. A few years ago, she was the well-known artist-in-residence at Milwaukee's historic and luxurious Pfister Hotel, where her work still hangs. She was very good at it and loved it, but she hasn't painted a portrait in years. I can see it definitely swinging back to that, but only in a way where it would be just for me. You know, as opposed to this stuff, I know I'm making a living on this. If I were to sit down and paint a person now, it would be just because I want to, just because I want to prove to how, how good I could do it, just to see how far I could push it. I don't care what that person thinks. I wouldn't ever care about selling it. And that seems like a really pure, exciting thing. So um, I, can see, I can see how going back and forth between those two um, is really beneficial because... This kind of painting has made me a better painter, technique-wise and observation and challenge. And watercolor is difficult, you know, and all my other paintings of people were in um, oil and acrylic. And so I can see how these, those two ways of working actually would blend into each other and enrich each other really, really well. Andy and Katie are husband and wife. Born, raised, educated, and trained in the Milwaukee area. But this is home now. It is where they feel most alive. The Mississippi River is their front yard. You live on this beautiful Mississippi River. How much does this influence your art? You're so far away from the big city. Yeah, I feel connected to all of the music that came out of this country on the river. And I feel connected to the, like the lifeblood of our country and our identity. And I think that's what my paintings are about. But for my work, I mean, this is this is the playground. This is where all the the stories start. You know, is is right out here in the marsh, in the water, around 
on the ground. So it's, it's, the, it's the beginning of everything. A couple of years ago, Andy and Katie were married at this church in Milwaukee. Instead of accepting an honorarium, the pastor told them about an idea for a painting that he had carried in his head for nearly 30 years. The moment, the very moment, after the flood when Noah opens the door of the ark and sees the wonder and possibility of the new day that lies ahead. Andy and Katie delivered, and the painting is now the first thing you see when you walk in the church. It is more than I think I, think I, I imagined. Uh, they put a lot of um, detail into the painting. The more you look at it, the more animals you keep finding, the more touches you find. Uh, but certainly the, the faces, which is all I wanted, uh, they certainly did that and, and more. You were telling me when you're at art fairs, you watch people all the time, look at your stuff, mm -hmm. and you can tell that they have an emotional connection mm -hmm. and a reaction to your work. When you look at this painting, do you have an emotional connection to it? I think of getting married here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is all part of the package of getting married here and our relationship with um, Pastor Mark and, uh, and the church and the church and and the story. I mean, there's it's a lot of great things wrapped up in one piece and the emotion of him and I doing a piece together, you know, for the first time. Um, thank God it was after the marriage, you know. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> we did pretty well. <laughs> Whether it's flora or fauna, faces or places, it is all natural, it is all real. What we get to look at is a deep and very personal connection between the artist and what they see and what they feel. And maybe, just maybe, we will feel the same thing. You can see more of Andy Fletcher and Katie Musov's art on display now at the Tory Folly Art Gallery in Milwaukee's historic Third Ward. And in February of 2018, they will both have featured exhibitions of their new paintings at the gallery. Learn more about their art on each of their websites, tinyurl.com slash Andy Fletcher and katiemusoff.com. The props department at the Milwaukee Repertory Theater creates many detailed elements to set the different scenes you see on stage everything from chandeliers to Scrooge's door knocker. Milwaukee artists Jerry Hirschman and Michael Paul Theory blend their love of design with their skills of glass blowing and metal sculpture to create beautiful and functional artworks. We visit with them and they share their process and why they consider themselves partners in art. We believe the fragility of the glass and the ruggedness, the sturdiness of the stainless steel are a great combination. My name is Jerry Hirschman and I am a glass blower. My name is Michael Paul Theory. I am a stainless steel metal sculptor. Partners in art is Jerry and me, combining our talents, mine and stainless steel and Jerry and glass to uh, create things of beauty and uh, we are indeed partners in our art. Michael and I were doing our own art simultaneously and doing the art shows together side by side with booths. One day we just kind of brainstormed what could we do differently. So I just made a very simple stem, so to speak, out of stainless steel. And I made a little hook on top of it. We could attach a piece of Jerry's glass to it. And we looked at it and said, let's put some leaves on that. And once we came up with the concept of our flowers, it really flourished into us really being partners in art. We saw something there that we've never seen before. And Michael helps me with every piece of glass I make. I help him with his stainless work. And, and we just married the two arts together. Michael and I decide on a color s scheme so that we have um, some continuity with the, the sculpture or the bouquet, if you will. We decide how many pieces we're going to have. 
For instance, they can be multicolored, but they all have something in common. Whether they have white specks or a yellow center or a, a red rim um, going around the outer part of the bowl. And from there, Michael builds the sculptures. I go into United uh, Salvage, and it's like going into a candy store, and I see all these wonderful things, and I just love to pick and choose. That's how I get the steel that I work with. So then uh, we'll take the steel, and we'll cut it, and uh, we'll bend it, twist it, turn it, and uh, do everything we can to it to get a shape that is pleasing. And then we'll take the steel, and we'll uh, grind the surfaces of it, put in designs if it has to have designs. Then we, have a, we clean the edges of it, make it smooth, so there's no rough edges after the grinding. And then uh, we uh, put the uh, pieces together into a completed plant for the flowers that Jerry made. Michael pushes himself to create more creative pieces all the time. The glass blowing process starts with a crucible of molten glass uh, at 2150 degrees on a five foot blow rod. Once you begin the process of glass blowing, you constantly have to turn the, the blow rod. Then we add the color and we, we begin the blowing process. For the flowers, we always add a patty, which is a separate piece of glass that I, I let fall onto a marvering table, cut it, and we place the actual blown piece onto it so that that is going to now be the place where Michael's stainless hook will rest and it'll keep the flower up on the sculpture. We will then um, open it wide, spin it out, let it hang down to give it kind of the, the handkerchief effect, they call it. Once we're done with the blown piece, we put it in an annealing oven. You can then have it start ramping down and glass needs to cool about two degrees a minute and by the next day, it's at room temperature, you can bring it out. Each piece shows Jerry's emotion. And I think that's, that's a real plus. Jerry and I are striving for a clean, sleek look. And the stainless and the grinding and the glass give that clean look. It could take anywhere from one hour to three weeks. We've created a variety of sizes, some individual flowers, some with, with multiple flowers, with a variety of colors. So there's something for everyone. It's all a non-stop problem solving. That's what, that's what art is all about. It's constant problem solving. And uh, eventually, with some collaboration, you can get through it. I personally love people's reaction to it. They'll look at it for its beauty. Jerry's on my combination. And they'll, they'll be afraid when, when we show them that the piece can be functional, that uh, we have something that really hasn't been introduced to this area before. And um, I think that's the fun part of it, besides loving the art ourselves. Michael and I get to share time together being creative. Our creating is really our entertainment. That's what we do. We've done it for so many years. We both have been doing this for about 25 years and it's our way of life. It's pushing yourself and pushing the limits and it's endless what you can do with glass. Keep your mind open and don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. Don't let them say you can't. Or their conversation pieces that we have all over the country. We definitely want people to enjoy our art. We are leaving an emotional impression on people. And I think that's what art's all about. It's a collaboration. We do it together. And uh, that's what makes us, I believe, successful artists. Partners in art, partners in life. Enjoy a gallery of Jerry Hirschman and Michael Paul Theory's artworks on their website, partners-in-art.com.
It's been fun to give you a bit of a look backstage and around the Milwaukee Repertory Theater. Special thanks to the staff here at The Rep for their hospitality and for the work that the cast and crews have done to share stories on stage and in our community for over 60 years. Learn more about their theatrical and educational programs at their official website, milwaukeerep.com. We love sharing stories about the arts community here in Wisconsin, and we'd love to hear from you. Please call us at 414-797-3760 with your feedback and story ideas. If you can't wait to see another episode of The Arts Page, you can stream our previous episodes and learn more about our show online when you visit the Milwaukee PBS website and milwaukeepbs.org and click on The Arts Page. You can find Milwaukee PBS on Facebook, too. I'm Sandy Max. Thank you for watching, and please join us next time for another half hour full of art on the Arts Page. Funding for the Arts Page is made possible by the Helen Daniels Bader Fund, a Bader philanthropy. Committed to bringing the creative arts to underserved audiences, the Helen Daniels Bader Fund encourages collaboration and innovation that strengthens our community to make our world a better place to live.